<clears throat> hey, welcome back. Uh, so, uh, it's been like a week since the video came out, and the results are in for all the voting uh, stuff. So, uh, recap. I had four headstock designs that I had come up with, and you guys voted on which ones you liked. We had A, we had B, we had C, and we had D. And I counted all the votes, and then I wrote them down, and then I lost the piece of paper, and then I started filming. So, from what I recall, it was, a, it was kind of a tie between A and C. And there were a few votes for B, but we're not going to use that one. I know there were votes for C, but I decided I don't want it to look like a Gibson, even though it looks like a Gibson. So that leaves A and D. And even though A won, I'm going to use D. And you'll see why. Because we're going to get super weird with this build. It's going to be fun. Just watch and you'll find out. Okay. So, because our stencil here uh, was traced from the headstock, and I butted the flat part right up against the nut, I can do the same thing here now, and put it right up against there, right? And then, let me flip this around where I can see it better. And then, we just take that and we make sure it's kind of, you know, centered on there. And then we take our pencil, and we trace this top edge. Let me see how close it actually is once we take this off. Okay, so it's not exactly like, you know, those little corners that I drew on here don't really show up, so I'm going to move those down a little bit. Like this. So we're going to remove all this. So the next step, it will be to cut this out. And, you know, the best thing to cut this out with would be, like, a bandsaw. But you probably don't have a bandsaw. Or you might have a bandsaw. I don't know what you got. So I want to I want to kind of showcase how to do this with as little uh, tools as possible, right? Because this is something anybody can do. So you're not going to go out and buy a bandsaw if you don't have one just to build a guitar that you bought as a kit. Um, so what else can we have? Um, a coping saw. This is called a coping saw. You use this to deal with your problems. Right now, our problem is our headstock is the wrong shape. You can get one of these pretty cheap, you know, like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something like that. And and they're, they're super easy to use. Basically, this is what was like a, like a jigsaw before a jigsaw or a bandsaw before a bandsaw. This is all of the, if you need to cut a line that's not straight, you know, you can go around curves and stuff like that. This is the perfect tool for that. So we're going to use a coping saw to cut this out because I want you to be able to do this at your kitchen table. Okay, so you could have held that onto the table with like a clamp or something because you're going to need a clamp, you know, when we glue the neck on. So we're still in the realm of you can do this at your kitchen table. Uh, you could clamp it down, you know, this way and work down. It would work. Okay, so next, this is rough because, you know, I ain't perfect. So we want to sand this out or whatever, right? So you can use a file with a rounded edge. I got this. It was a whole set of files. I got this at Harbor Freight for not much money at all. So this is, this is a pretty cheap tool. Just smooth out any inconsistencies in your curve. You want it to be a nice sweeping curve. And if you're not trying to film this and you're working from the other side, you won't hit your knuckles on the table as much as I am. But I'm trying to film this. Okay, so now, so now we want to sand it. And to, sur to sand a surface like this, you can take a round object this is actually a roll of sandpaper. But if you don't have a roll of sandpaper, you have another round object. You take your sandpaper, 
and you wrap it around it. And then you just sand it. This is end grain. It's gonna be harder to sand than edge grain or face grain just because all the fibers are going like this. So you're just sanding off the tops of those fibers. Uh, so it's, it takes a little longer to sand end grain, but don't skip it. It looks terrible when you don't sand end grain. This is uh, 180 grit. It's kind of rough, but not too rough. Also, you see the sandpaper starts to get loaded up with, with, with dust. And then it's not sanding anymore because that's full. You can just take this, smack it, get dust on your <coughs> lungs. <coughs> wear a mask, kids, wear a mask. You can also do this without the round thing. You know, when you get these corners, get these edges. You wanna make sure you break the edges too. That's just when you sand over the, the edge here. So it's not like super sharp. By just breaking the edges, it still looks sharp to the eye, but it's not gonna like, you're not gonna catch the grain on something and rip a chunk out. Okay, so that's 180. You wanna follow it with 220. This roll of sandpaper happens to be 220, so I'm just gonna use it. So far, two videos of just me sanding. This is terrible. Why are you even watching this? Hey, I had an idea for a, an awards show for Instagram creators or whatever. Call it the Instagrammies. I know it's a million dollar idea. I just shared it for free. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, my back hurts from bending over like that. So now I'm going to take 320 because that's our final grit. Make everything look and feel nice. And there's our headstock. It looks all right. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the neck on. Now, because these are machined, you know, I'm, I don't know exactly the process they use in making these, but I assume they take and they make a bunch of bodies on a CNC and they make a bunch of necks separately. So. Whenever you put this in here, right, this just drops right in, right? It's got some room to wiggle back and forth. Now, since these holes are already here, this has to be lined up correctly to this, right? So what you have to do is make sure that you're gluing the neck straight to the center line of the body. Now, this body doesn't have a center line drawn on it, and this neck doesn't have a center line drawn on it, so we have to figure this out another way. We're going to use these holes to our advantage. All you need is a straight thing. A straight edge, a ruler, something long enough, you know, something with a straight edge. We're going to take the neck and we're going to drop it in, like so. And then you want to take your straight edge. You can do this with one, but it's a little better with two. And you take the straight edge and you line it up with the neck as it's going down through here, correct? Right. And then you take, and you look and see where is this in relation to this hole, right? Because these holes are in the center, right? They are, sure they are. So where is this in relation to this hole? And this one is, is just right on the edge of this hole. So now I'm gonna take this one, and put this up against the edge of the fretboard and see where this is in relation to this hole. And you see it's further away. So this needs to go that way a little bit. I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm gonna slide this down to the edge of the table. And the reason you wanna slide it to the edge of the table is because right now this is flat and this is flat and this, this is not touching down here because this needs to be angled backwards. The body and the neck. You see, this needs to go back and this actually goes back further than this if it's on a flat surface. So we're gonna slide it to the edge. Now I can put it on here and it sits properly. Now, you're gonna be tempted to push this all the way up against the inside of the thing, but you see there's it's, it's uneven right here. You want this to be even with this. You want the edge of your cutout here to be even with the edge of the cutout here so your pickups fit inside. Now, some luthiers, luthier is a fancy word for a person that makes guitars. Some luthiers like to use hide glue, which is basically, you make jelly out of cow bones, and 
hide and hooves, you know, horse glue, right? It's the old fashioned stuff. Um, and you can make it or you can buy it. And the great thing about hide glue is that you can use steam to have it release. Um, where wood glue, once it cures, it's on there, buddy. So you can use hide glue if you ever want to take this neck back off. I don't plan on doing that. Squirt just some glue in there and spread it around nice and even. Neck. Slide in. Make sure that we're even with the edges of this guy here. Take our straight edge. Make sure that, see, uh, it's not exactly where it was before. Now it is. Take your other one. Check it. No, oh, we're centered. Okay. So take these away. Take a scrap of wood. Then you take a clamp. Move a little closer to the edge. I'm going to use my bench and clamp this whole shebang together. So this is going to be actually clamped to the bench. And you can do this with one clamp. One clamp is all you need. Go to the store and buy one clamp. You be a one clamp Charlie over here with the one clamp. But you make sure you clamp it down real good, right? And this ain't going nowhere. And this ain't going nowhere. <clears throat> Once you get it clamped down, check your alignment one more time. And now, you wait for glue to dry. Hi, it's been here for a couple hours. I think it's, you know, it's not set. I wouldn't go hanging from it or anything, but it's probably good enough to go ahead and take the clamp off. Let's find out. Hooray. So there's some glue squeeze out right here. Here's another specialty tool. You don't have to have a chisel. This is my cheap piece of crap. Like, I call it my garbage chisel, right? I'm always scraping glue with it and stuff. It's uh, not pretty, but you don't need... You don't need the best chisel in the world for this, but anyway, you just take it and you give it a little kind of kind of chop down this way, right? And go easy, you know, you're not trying to cut into the wood. And then you come with it this way. And you let those two little cuts meet each other. By the way, don't put your hand here, because when you slip off, you're going to cram the chisel into your hand, and then you have to super glue your hand shut. Don't ask me how I know that. So anyway, yeah, you keep repeating this little back and forth until that little bead of glue is loose, and it comes off. If you don't have a garbage chisel, you can do this with, you know, anything really. You can do it with your pocket knife, or you can probably do it with like a razor blade. Sanding. Hooray! Okay, so that's going to do it for this episode. We're already over 13 minutes, so we'll do more. So stay tuned, because next week we're going to dye it and finish it and maybe start putting it together. Maybe have a whole guitar. I don't know what we're going to finish next week. I haven't gotten there yet. But subscribe so you don't miss it. Ring that little bell in the bottom. Then when I release the next one, you'll get a notification. Until then, check out the link in the description to my new t-shirt store where you can get a t-shirt just like this one, or maybe one that looks better, if you don't like tie-dye. There's all kinds. All kinds of designs, all kinds of shirts, hoodies, hats, bags, all sorts of stuff. So go there and buy something. I'm babbling, so I'm going to stop now. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day.